Attention, please. And now, it's Cutter's Rock Cat. Holds are uh, holds your kid. Uh, she just turned two, so. Ooh, yeah. All right, yeah, early days. <laughs> yeah, we are we are in the thick of it, definitely. You, you said you have some kids as well. Yeah, I have a, uh, my daughter's about to turn 14, so I've already been. Holy shit, Jesus. <laughs> and my son's 11, but. So I, do you have any advice for me? <laughs> uh, enjoy it, because soon they talk back. I feel like it's already happening. It's just, it's just, uh, it's just gibberish. But it's man, the, the the attitude is really funny to see sometimes. I'm like, what's your deal? Yeah, but um, yeah, it's like, whoa, where did that come from? Okay. Yeah, she used to just be like a really. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, I think I think I'm just eating my words because I I just used to just rave about how she was just the easiest baby, and she she really was up until like. Maybe like three months before she turned two, and then like a switch flipped. I was like, "Holy shit, you are like a different kid now." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. just wait, you know, because uh, when they get older and they start doing activities and stuff, I joke around all the time, man. I'm just, I'm, I'm a driver. That's it. That's all I do. I just drive them around. Like I feel like I need to be Jason Statham with a suit and something in the trunk, you know, just like <laughs> driving them around. That's it. Um. But it's it's uh it's cool though, man. You know, my daughter sings and she's super into music, and uh, we, get sick. Down, we get to sit down here and I break out the acoustic guitar and she'll sing she'll sing a little bit. It's fun. That part's fun. Crazy, crazy, man. Uh, well, hey, man. Listen, you know, I, I just tweeted this out a little bit ago because I was thinking, you know, going back in my records, I'm like, I had to have had Dayseeker on this show once before, at the very least. My old co-host introduced me to you guys. I don't know, five six years ago um obsessed absolutely loves the band date speaker and i know she's interviewed you before but uh i never actually had you on this show so welcome to the cutting edge countdown and cutters rockcast man i appreciate the time yeah thanks for having me man i appreciate of it of course i want to i want to dig back in your history a little bit and i want to go back to the very beginning uh because it's been about a decade right since you guys initially kind of launched the band um just yeah. over um your sound, Dayseeker's sound has always been a little bit different from everybody else in the scene, it feels like. There's a, there's a lot more pop kind of references involved in the songwriting and things like that. But what was your initial vision of this band? And, and you know, has it kind of gone the direction you've seen or, you know, followed the journey, so to speak? Yeah, I mean, I think in the beginning we were really just trying to be like... I don't want to say like a dime a dozen band, but I really think we were just kind of grasping on the bands like architects or just, just bands that were like primarily like a split half screaming, half singing kind of vibe. And um, I think that's just what we, that's just what we liked when we were in our early twenties, you know, when we started this band. And then I think as we got older, definitely I realized on, on my end and a lot of the other guys end that like, you know like I, yeah probably by like our third record i was we were still kind of trying to write the same music but we like weren't listening to it in our own free time and i think we hit a weird point where our third record was probably our most like metal heavy record we've ever done and then it was it, the irony was so funny because i i was just like i don't i don't listen to this like why why are we writing this music and then um I mean, I think by the time we got to our fourth record, um, Sleep Talk, we just, we kind of realized that, like, we had, like, small popularity, but at the rate that we were growing as a band, like, we would be, like, in our 70s by the time people would, like, really start liking us if we continued down that path. So we um, we decided to kind of take a risk and and really move and kind of lean more into, like, pop-structured writing, like like, really more like simplified melodies and it's a lot of reusing of parts and just tweaking them as you reuse them and um and then it ended up just paying off like tenfold so um it, it feels it kind of feels like we probably should have done that a really long time ago but I think we always envisioned that we hoped we would get a little more a little more accessible um as we got older 
I, I can't say that I really saw us like leaning into this um, like 80s kind of vibe um, on our last two records. But I think it was just kind of like it was just kind of something that was happening with the times. And I, I think that we realized that we just didn't see a lot of other bands like really, at least in like our genre, trying to integrate like more like vintage 80s like synthesizers into like a more modern or hard rock kind of band so um I, i'm really happy with how everything's been coming along and it is it is a trip though because i i mean you, you never really know like what what your band is going to turn out sounding like as the years go on but it's it's been great the the last couple of years I, I really can't complain well i think you you mentioned sleep talk and it does sort of feel like right if you listen to the uh, date seeker discography, that is the record where it feels like everything sort of comes together, and Dark Sun is a continuation of that. And you mentioned the the um, the synthesis, the eighties sound, which is interesting because you know there's been a lot of that lately. But everybody keeps you know, hanging on the hat of Stranger Things. Oh, it's Stranger, you know, the music from Stranger Things, and people <laughs> using these sounds and, yeah. and these songs coming back from the eighties and and all this stuff, but. You know, some of the pop, some of the pop has gone that route too of using those '80s. You know, the weekend is a great totally, one. yeah. Um, and you guys are doing it, uh, in a, in a rock sense with a guitar solo and and some down tuned riffs. It's it's an interesting sound, man. Yeah, I'm really um, I'm I'm grateful for it, man. I, I think um, that's funny. Yeah, definitely the weekend is somebody where I'm like, that's cool. Like he really, you know, he really leaned into that in a way where he primarily he put out an album yeah he just mostly uses like 80 synthesizers and uh i think yeah there was this there's this band called the midnight um that had gotten more popular over recent years and they mm. they really are their whole thing is is like they're they're like if an 80s project was done um like really well in this era and i think they were like some of the first music that i heard where i heard like 80 synthesizers and like really good like recording quality and production i was like this is really cool actually and then we i just think we wanted to try like different stuff with sleep talk and we were lucky that our our producer is um he's just great like we, we can i can write something on piano and then we'll i mean sometimes you'll spend an hour just scrolling through different like synthesizer noises until you find one where you're like i think that's cool and then you have to layer it with like two other sounds to get like the the right kind of uh the right kind of voicing for it but we're lucky we have that guy because i i don't think our albums would have turned out the same if we didn't have him but uh yeah man i i like the 80s vibe i i don't know if i want to do it so much to where it, it becomes like a like a gimmick or, or just something that's expected but um I, I do think it suited like our our last couple of records that we've done well i don't know i don't know if you would even like if I listen to Dark Sun as an example, since that's the last album that came out in November, I don't feel it as a gimmick. I just hear the influence. You know, that's great. <laughs> that's exactly what we want. Yeah. Well, there you go. Um, including, of course, even the music videos, because like the latest one uh, for "Climb While You're Dancing," which sounds kind of like an '80s song name, doesn't it? Or like, you know, an emo. It's like an emo name if it was in the '80s, almost. Um, but you got mm. even in the video, it's like a it's like a high school dance kind of vibe. <laughs> but you know, again, yeah, arm solo, and that's what that's what I love about it is you can take all yeah. this stuff and you can still be rock and roll. Yeah, we definitely. Um, that was an interesting one because that that was the only song on the album that like most of the songs start with. Oh, I have this piano part or this guitar part or like I have this vocal thing in my head and like I. I think I was just out and about and it's some, I just wrote it down on my notes app, like crying while you're dancing. Cause I thought it would be an interesting, maybe even just lyric, um, maybe song title. And then we wrote like an entire, we wrote like the entire song around the hook for the chorus. And it's, it's just weird how that song kind of came about, but we definitely had a lot of like, we particularly had a lot of heavily, or I'm sorry, a lot of heavy, uh influence on like what that video was going to be about and the vibe and it was kind of the difference and like oh we're gonna we're gonna put like suits on and wear makeup and stuff and i was, I was kind of worried people might be like what the hell is going on here you know but um it 
no it, it worked really well i think it fit like the I, I think it fit like the branding and the image overall like like in a really nice way so um yeah definitely we're definitely going for big 80s vibes with that song in particular I think the beauty of music now though rory and i don't know where your head's at but i i feel like the beauty of music now whether it's hard rock or whether it's pop whatever is you can kind of get away with doing whatever and it's not going to be like it used to be if you know if slayer didn't put out a thrash record and put out a ballad it was good their heads were going to come off um we're, we're now it feels like you can kind of do that and people enjoy it embrace it even i i completely agree actually i said this on a different podcast that like dude when i was in high school um and like like say Sen was a big thing um, yeah I mean, like so Circus Revival. It's, it's just funny because all I had a core group of friends where, like, it's just there were a handful of them that were really like elitist metalheads, and they were really into like as they lay dying, um, like all that remains, like stuff where like if it had singing, it was really minimal, and most of the albums were, they were just riffs with with guys yelling, and then if I. And I really, I, I enjoyed that stuff, but I really was into like, in my teenage years, I got into like, uh, like a yellow card, um, like, yeah, like, uh, like Seosin, Circus Survive. And it's funny, I remember like, I mean, stuff you couldn't get away with saying now, um, like oh, this, I got called like a lot of uh, derogatory homophobic slurs for listening to this music uh, when uh -huh. I was younger. And yeah, and it was like, and I was like, I just, sorry, I like music with singing. And then the funny thing is, is that by the time all those guys turned 18 and we were in our last year of high school, they were all listening to all the same music, like Circus Survive and Seosin. And so they, they just needed time to kind of grow up. But I, it is one thing that I'm proud of, like in our, in our like music scene, I do feel like, I think people just got kind of tired of hearing the same metal band and rock band over and over again and so i think like i'm not we're not trailblazers or anything but i think like us having like a dash of 80 synth in there and like leaning into pop writing i mean you have bands like bad omens where you know they're doing metal but they're doing it in a really interesting way i feel like people are kind of like starved for just something new and interesting so i'm i'm really grateful that like people seem really yeah they seem really really open to like bands trying to like redefine their sound uh as long as they do it well and it sounds authentic well it's always key it's got to be done good yeah because if it sucks it still sucks uh but i'm glad you brought up just i'm glad you just brought up bad omens they just had a number one rock song this is this is the crazy thing to me right okay so without me doing well right it hits hits top 20 for day seeker congratulations by the way and I'll Thanks, ask man. a little bit more about that song in a minute, but um, Bad Ohm is just have a number one rock song. It's it, it doing rock radio for as long as I've done rock since I was a teenager. Um, there was a lull of music where it did all sound exactly the same, whether it made the radio or whether it didn't, it all sounded exact, kind of exactly the same. It was like a cookie cutter sort of aspect. Now some great bands came out of that. Don't get me wrong, but um when metalcore and and I don't know when metalcore went a little bit more pop almost is when you started to see that shift and that's been a fun journey to watch uh bands you know your peers be able to continue to just rise and rise and rise and I think you guys are right on that next level as well it's cool it's it's really cool to see yeah I'm really I'm really grateful man we definitely have been trying to kind of tap <clears throat> like into the active rock world for for ages and ages and I, I gotta be honest I did not think without me um was gonna be the song to do that like I'm, I'm still very yeah I'm very surprised that that is doing um what it's doing I think I think it's a, a great song and it, it is it is one of my favorites off the record but like it was not a song that <laughs> I feel like when you're trying to get active rock you just need like a you know, just like, oh, it's like a beat, it's heavy, it's rock. And I'm like, dude, the band doesn't even hit until like a minute and a half into that song. So I'm I'm really <clears throat> I'm surprised that, that that's the one that's doing really well. But I'm but I think it's awesome though too. It's it's the same thing for Bad Omens, where like they I is is it uh is it just pretend? Is that their number one? Because that's like 
again, that's funny because that's like, that is not the typical formulaic, like, rock charting song i mean it, it's a great song but i'm it just it makes me happy like um i mean because yeah you see all the other i've seen all the other bands on the tour with like you know like godsmack and and just, just where i'm sure the, a lot of these songs are probably more typical like it, you know just exactly what people want to hear and so I, I think it's really cool again i think maybe people are just like thank god this isn't like the same formulaic like rock song getting thrown at me over and over again so, so maybe maybe that's why it's charting so well for for us and for them well again you see the difference and, and and this is the cool thing about bad omens hitting number one when it hits number one uh this week because it was we kicked off the year right it's metallica it's Five finger death punch for a week it's disturbed for a week it's star set and breaking benjamin for a week which is cool in of itself uh Bad Omens for a week, and then Lincoln Park by the time we get here next week will be the number one song for the next six months probably. But um, to to be able to to sneak that in there, uh, it's cool. And and there have been a lot of really interesting bands being able to sneak in. There. Ronnie Radke's a fucking rock star. Like I didn't see that one coming, or he became the biggest rock star in the world. You know what I mean? Like it's just kind yeah. of the goofy dude that he was, and that's that. That to me says it all when rock music kind of figures and heads to come out and, and something a little bit different. And then that guy becomes the guy to do that. That tells me, rock, you know, Ghost is another good example. Like rock is opened up again. And I think it's become, it's becoming really big again. And that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's. You you know you really can't take away anything from Ronnie Radke about his talent and that his it's every time they put out a music video I watch it and I'm, yeah even if I'm not like oh I'm gonna listen to this like twenty four seven I'm always like he's trying something really cool really different the video is usually done like super well it's it's definitely like they definitely have their brand kind of locked down. I, yeah, I, they just they they announced the tour with... out of my nose watching the last one when <laughs> laptops rained down upon Sebastian Bach. Um, I laughed so hard. <laughs> yeah, it's no, it's great, and it, I mean it's crazy too because I mean I think sometimes it's like hard to get a gauge on how popular a band is until you see them like until you see a tour lineup and you see like who's opening for who because I yeah. I, I thought Ice Nine Kills was like I mean they are they are a massive band but it's crazy yeah it's crazy they're like supporting Falling in Reverse and then same thing like um we kind of like came up with Spirit Box is that they're we have the same producer and I I just I remember a key time where both of our bands were not doing very well but we we were still going to the same producer and he was just like yeah I think I think like it's really going to pop off for this band spirit box. And I, I liked their music. And then it was, it was just really cool to see like their, their rise to success and it's continuing, but it's the same thing where I'm like, damn, I, I guess, yeah, I didn't really, I thought spirit box is, they, they are a huge band, but yeah, it's crazy. They're supporting falling in reverse. So it's like, yeah, I mean, falling in reverse plays, you know, if I take a step back, I'm like, I'm pretty sure they play like smaller arenas that like six or 7,000 people a night. Like that's, that's a lot of tickets, man. Like it really well, is. They were playing small arenas in co-headlining <laughs> with, uh, you know, one of the mainstays of the genre and Papa Roach. And I think yeah. he was closing the shows. I think Papa was actually opening for them. Crazy. Which is just, again, you know, and those guys do it and I've always done it well, but um, it, it's, it's, it's cool. Speaking of touring. So you guys are going out with Silverstein, right? Like um, this spring. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We we leave in a couple weeks here. Uh, tell me, Silverstein is an interesting band too because they, you know, and I just had those guys on mid last year and had a really cool conversation with the singer. But um, they've been doing it for twenty years. They've been out for a long time. Uh, I imagine that for you guys to be able to go hit the road, some of those shows looks like they're starting to sell out, huh? This tour looks like it'll be cool. Yeah, yeah. I think I think we we got sent an updated flyer, and I I think about half of the tour is sold out, and then I think I think like a lot of the remaining shows are on low ticket warnings, um, and I, I I think a lot of those will will continue to sell really well, like as as we get closer to it starting, and 
of course there's there's just those people who wait until like the day of to try and get a ticket to go to the show and then nope. and then they get pissed off when they they can't go but um yeah hey, it's, for some it's, of us it's because your your, uh, your child has to go spend the night at mom's house and she didn't give you an answer until <laughs> maybe that's just me i don't know <laughs> I know, but man, you're you're cutter, dude. I'm sure you get to just walk in any show you want to, man. So, um, I like but yeah, to no, it's true, but <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, no, it's a cool full circle moment. I definitely um, it's funny. Yeah, I I, I actually I just did a I, I just talked to Shane um from Silver I I did his I've done his podcast once before, and I, I just did it again. We we kind of wanted to do it again because just because we're going out together on tour, but um, no, it's really cool, man. Silver scene was, um, it's funny. I, I actually, I, I had a friend actually message me the other day and she was just like, like, it's just a girl. I, I don't talk to a ton anymore, but I knew her when I was like 14 or 15. Um, and I'm, I'm 33 now. So, I mean, a very long time ago. And she was just like, do you remember, do you remember when, you like we used to make like mix mix cds and and silver scene was on there and and now you you get to like tour with them she's just like i'm I'm just really proud of like just watching you from the sidelines even if we don't talk a lot and it is yeah it's just crazy i i remember just being uh in high school and like they they had that record um i think it was called discovering the waterfront and it said yeah. like smile in your sleep and just um just so many yeah, it was just such a good record um, when I was like an angsty teenager and, you know, just just sad about a lot of shit. And, um, I, it's, I, I always I think there's a polite way to like punish people that you were fans of at one point. So I'll always just tell Shane, I was like, dude, I like recorded a cover of Discovering the Waterfront when I was like 16 or 17. And um, it's definitely like a it's it's a cool moment i think yeah i think if i like if my high school self knew we, we were gonna be like a direct support for a silverstein tour you know I, i'd be ecstatic but i think like as you get older too you just start realizing that all these people that you you listen to and you, you maybe even idolize when you were younger like they're just people who got really lucky and or, or they're really talented and they got successful in doing something that they loved so I, it's i can just look at them as, as um like just people um who play good music but it's 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 really awesome man it's it's a cool i'm not saying any other tour we've done has not been awesome but this this one definitely was just so cool like yeah like i think the younger me would, would be really psyched the, the current me is really psyched but it's just um it's just cool to like get to go out with a band that you you listen to like so much uh in, in like your youth so i'm i'm very grateful for that one i think it's going to be fun you mentioned uh angsty feel, feelings of sadness and angsty you know when you're a teenager and that's that's how we come across the music we come across and we fall in love there's no doubt uh lyric we talked about your music but what about lyrics uh, you know, early on, you guys, again, you know, a little bit heavier and a little bit more aggressive. And now you're sort of doing what you're doing. Do you incorporate then different styles of, of words and kind of subject matter now? Are you more open to different subjects than just the I'm pissed off, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, most times with uh, with Dayseeker, because uh, I, I, I do write all the lyrics. So I, I feel like it, it's just usually what whatever happens to be going on in my life uh, at the time <laughs> that we're working on the album and I mean yeah Dark Sun like half the record was about my my dad's uh passing and and just like a lot of different stages of, of grief and just what what that was like and then and then the, you know the, but then there's a good chunk of the album that still touches on like relationships um heartbreak love um like just generalized the sadness or depression i mean I, I it's funny i I think like i think there was a time just a short few years ago where like us writing the music that we were writing it was just kind of like god why are you guys so sad all the time and then I, it's <laughs> it's weird that now i feel like it's a brand thing where like we it's like again it's just something i didn't see where like we lean into it and now people are like yeah like they're they're really into like this like just you know like we'll 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 typo it out in like a, or we'll type it out in the caption. Like who's going to come cry with us at Rocklahoma or, you know, it's just like, 
and people are into it it is it is weird i i guess at the end of the day to be like a band that is tied with like like most people who come to our shows are just like they're bawling their eyes out if they're like big fans and they and they they like really resonate with the performance or i i'll usually say a short bit about like what a song is about before we play it and um it's it's interesting yeah just to be a band that is associated with like just so many tears and crying but um in a way it feels like for for the people who say that they cry it does feel like they say that it's in a it's in like a good cathartic kind of way it's not like they're they're actually really like depressed about it it's it's like they maybe needed to get something out so um I'm cool with it now, but yeah, we, our brand is definitely just, to, I don't think we would make it if we just shifted into like this happy poppy band, like on our next record, you know? No, I'm looking forward to it. I want to hear all about sunshine and rainbows and, and, uh, you know, and you'll still have girls in social media going, Oh my God, it's so great. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's, that's how you know a band has made it when the girls in social media are crying over your music um yeah we, or, we made it man <laughs> we're using it as uh, sex therapy as in the case of the aforementioned bad omens um mm. uh festival you mentioned Rocklahoma, so festivals man you guys are on all of them it feels like uh, rock fest in wisconsin in- incarceration sonic temple Rocklahoma in oklahoma welcome to Rockville, for you guys really really are in that kind of mid-tier uh festival day midday lineup uh, you know, playing in front of some of the legends in the world of rock. Yeah, um, that's another thing we we tried for a really, really long time to kind of tap into the festival world, and it's it's funny that I sometimes we get sent like assets and like uh, you know, like flyers or stuff that I don't even remember. <laughs> like confront like I'm like here's a flyer for Rocklahoma, and like another. I'm like, dude, I don't remember. Like I'm like Jesus, but it's I mean they're all great opportunities and it is like especially if you can get into like you know into the yeah into the festival circuit on top of being I think in like the active rock circuit I mean there, there's definitely like a I think there's definitely like a formula here for like just your band getting put in front of a lot of different people and and probably definitely a big difference in success I mean it's it's a trip because I remember like I was when I was talking about like our third record that was like really metal. I, I remember like our Spotify listeners, I think were like, I think we had like 80 or 90,000 a month, and we were pretty psyched on that at the time. And now yeah, we're like, and I know, but now it's like a million. And so I'm just like, yeah, it's um, like, I think it's it, which is so funny to me because I'll I still run into people who are like, oh man, like, why'd you guys like why'd you go all singing or like there's barely any screaming on the new record and like we wouldn't have like we could not have financially and just like like it's not fun to tour playing metal um you know driving 10 hours a day to play for 80 people like that's not that's not you know I'm glad it pleases like this two percent of like music listeners who want just metal and breakdowns and i i like i get it you know you you get attached to the way a band sounds and then it's it's hard to accept when they want to do something different but it's just uh it's just funny because i'm just like dude those bands these bands you like would probably just break up um if you wanted them to keep writing the same album over and over again so um yeah but i'm i'm happy that we we finally kind of started tapping into the the festival world and i I think um, I'm hoping like at like next year we, we get to do some of the same festivals and then maybe our name will be like a, a little bigger on the flyer, you know, <laughs> as, as it goes on, you know? Well, Hey, you're bigger than the fine print. And as long as you're bigger than the fine print, you're doing okay. That's great. That's great. Yeah. Uh, 1,044,256. Uh, that is the monthly listeners for day seeker as of this moment on Spotify. Uh, Roy cool. Rodriguez from day seeker dude it's a pleasure i thank you for the conversation greatly appreciate it and congratulations it's well deserved and you should be proud of yourselves dude thanks man i, I appreciate it that's that's really nice of you cutters rock cast don't forget to tune in exactly 